The question that we're going to deal with today is a question about the uh, nature of the planet going through the sixth mass extinction of life, where we're starting to see that the biosphere is collapsing all around us and that humans are pretty much involved with undermining the role of nature and influencing the adverse situations that are causing the demise of many species on this planet. We have to own responsibility that we are indeed involved with the changes. Now, for example, the big issue is global warming, global climate change. Uh, did humans cause this? Well, I don't think we caused it, but I can tell you this, we sure are influencing it and causing a great acceleration of this. So we can either just sit by and watch it go really fast, or we can roll up our sleeves and start to actually do something to change the planet. You said, well, how can I change the planet? What can we do? Well, number one, we have to recognize that many of the technologies that we have grown up with are actually technologies that are destructive to the planet. Uh, for example, combustion uh, energy for using for fuel driving vehicles uh, or the generators of electricity and on a planet burning fossil fuels, etc. This is a very negative aspect to the environment for a very important reason. Uh, first, we're depleting the earth of natural resources. Secondly, the pollution from burning combustible products is interfering with the atmosphere, changing the temperature and creating uh, the greenhouse effect of increasing increasing carbon dioxide into the world. And combustion appears to be one of the big things. And it's very interesting because we're also talking about the amazing meltdown of the Arctic poles. And you say, well, how come it's melting down? Well, some people say, well, the temperature is rising. I go, yeah, that's true. But there's one other very important aspect that is a little separate from the temperature, and that is this. If you look at the snowpack in the Arctic region, for years the snow was crystalline, beautiful white. But in the last number of years, in the last 50, 75 years in the industrialization of the planet and the burning of fossil fuels, that the snowpack is being covered by a fine layer of soot, giving it a lightish gray color. Well, the relevance about lightish gray is when the sun hits the pure white ice, the sunlight is reflected back off the surface again. But when the sunlight hits any coloring on the ice, like the gray soot, the soot absorbs the heat and that's what causes the rapid melting of the ice pack. So uh, it is very clear that our combustion of fossil fuels has uh, seriously uh, influenced the more uh, accelerated melting of the poles. So it says, well, what are we going to do about that? And the answer is, well, obviously, we're going to have to change something about the way we provide for energy on this planet. And you say, well, what, what can we do? Are there other ways to create energy? And the answer is, of course, there are other ways to create energy. And everyone knows about them. And you say, well, then if we have all these ways of alternative forms of energy creation, why are we sticking with combustion? The answer is because the money invested in the petroleum and the petroleum byproducts industry is so vast and so great. Money talks. In this case, money yells. And the significance is that the interest of those involved with the petroleum industry uh, and the money they have exceeds the abilities of uh, the more green and the more natural people to bring in new ideas and technology. In fact, uh, the petroleum industry has done its very best to remove technology from the world that would be an offset to conventional combustion. Uh, and this is a way of them preserving their marketable item, the petroleum. So by removing the alternative, then we're stuck with the petroleum. Can we change this? The answer, of course we can change this. And when we start to change this, we're going to start to learn to bring back more harmony and balance into the world. But we also have many other aspects that we have to change because our modern way of life has distorted the nature of what provided for life in the first place. So, for example, food, nutrition. We eat food for nutrition, but if you look at the food that is factory farmed today, that is food that is produced by volume, not the value of nutrition at all. So most of the factory farmed uh, materials that we eat have very little nutritional quality to it. Uh, and they look pretty, but they don't have any taste or food value to them. And yet, this is how we grow things. You want to grow cows, you put them in little pens. You want to grow chickens, you put them in little boxes. And all of this, but this has nothing to do with real life. Is the food quality any good? 
And the answer is, we now are beginning to find out through so many analyses, no, the quality and the contaminants in the food with the way we're feeding them, the amount of drugs that we give them, the amount of fertilizers and other chemistry that we're adding to the earth that is taking this all out of balance has affected every living organism, not just the plants, but the animals that eat the plants. So all of a sudden we're starting to find, my God, the way we're living in the mass-produced industrial world is actually undermining all aspects of our health and our life. And we have the technology to change. But the only way you're going to change is we have to stop supporting the industry that prevents us from changing. The, for example, the GMO industry is out there trying to tell us that GMOs are as good as any other food. And yet the data is very clear. GMOs, which are not natural, throw a monkey wrench into normal metabolic activity. That we already know GMOs influence normal health in a situation that is adverse. And we're, we're killing ourselves with all this stuff. And yet people are so busy moving so fast, they haven't paid any attention to the fact that, look at our health industry. Look at the crisis of medical care in this world. How much money are we spending in medical care and how effective is it? And it turns out, well, for the amount of money we're spending, you'd think we'd be the healthiest people in the world. And it turns out, no, we're not. We're somewhere way down in the middle of industrialized nations and we spend the most money. So the issue is, a well, long time story is, throw money at something, it'll make it better turns out not to be true at all. All we're doing is throwing technology, but technology that is not in harmony with the world. It's time to say, look, we need to change. We need to change and we need to identify who we are. We need to, under, uh, we need to identify how we live on this planet. We need to identify how we can be here with the smallest footprint and allow all the other organisms to maintain the environment because we are a product of the environment. We didn't show up in the Genesis version that nature was here and then people were added on top. We evolved from nature. The relevance is what we evolved from is being destroyed. You're undermining the platform from which human life developed. And as a result, human life will fall. And that's what we're failing right now. We're falling because we have completely misunderstood the nature of the organic, natural world uh, because we were imbued with a belief. Just, oh, technology, we can dominate nature. And that belief has led us to every step to try to outdo nature one way or another way. And every one of these steps is essentially caused the, causing the ruin of our own life and our own biology. Yes, there are technologies out there that are better. Can we get to them? If we as a group decide that's what we want to do, yes. But if we just fall victim and pray to the commercial marketplace, we will keep encouraging the industrial situation that really has distorted food and the environment and every other aspect of our lives. In the midst of crisis, there are many different ways people can respond, but one of the most important understandings we have to understand about crises is this. When a crisis affects a population, and it's not really dependent on the social structure or the wealth of an individual in that population, when it is a general threat to everybody in the population, there's a unique response that people have. They start to work together in harmony. And this is really critical because the threats that we face are coming from so many different directions at once. And it doesn't make a difference how much money you have and what your belief systems are. If we continue on the path that we're on, we're all going into to the uh, state of an extinction. And this is what we have to deal with. Consequently, recognizing that as a group, humans are facing the same threats. This is really the most wonderful uh, opportunity for humans to come together and work in harmony. And this is what the whole story behind Uplift is all about, that we're trying to get off the ground in Australia and now around the world. And this is what the, the new consciousness movement is all about, saying, look, we're all in the same boat, we're all on the same spaceship, and we all have to work together to make this work. And this is what we're finding, that people will start to coalesce because they recognize that what's happening in the world is not directed at any specific group, but is really directed at all humans at the same time. And so this is a call for us to come together, put aside differences and start to recognize we're all in the same extinction. And this is why it's necessary for us to say, we must start working together in harmony and move into that evolution that I write about in Spontaneous Evolution, where all the people start to recognize that each one of us is a cell in the body of a larger organism, a super organism called humanity. When humanity works together in harmony, there will be no issue or problem that we will not be able to overcome and create a better world. 
That is our future, and it is right in front of us.